If you love builder gel overlays and want to jump into trying an extension, then this is going to be the video for you. What's up, nail crew? It's Nicole, your fellow nail obsessed DIYer. Today we are doing mini extensions. I've had a bunch of people ask me if I could just do what it would look like to do a small builder gel extension, not anything crazy and long. And you know what? This ended up being perfect because I wanted a little bit of length on my nails because I messed up my shape when I tried to do round nails. They did not go so well. So I thought this was a perfect opportunity to do some builder gel extensions. Now, first, we're going to talk about how you put on paper forms. And that's something that I struggle with, too, when I first started. What you want to do is first you want to pull off the little tab that's on the inside. And that goes right on the underneath of the form, right where you're going to slip your finger in, because that provides stability for underneath your nail to hold the form up so that the gel doesn't just kind of like flop down. That extra little piece just gives it that extra hold to like make a little bridge almost that goes underneath the the little part that goes underneath your nail and then the bridge for making the extension. My nails have already been prepped and the cuticles cleaned up before I even put the forms on that I'm going to go through and dehydrate my nails. I always do my builder gel one hand at a time. I've noticed for me it lasts a lot longer if I just do one hand at a time because then the primer can still be sticky. So after you dehydrate five nails then you're going to scrub in the primer. You kind of etch it into your nails which means like you're scrubbing it slash rubbing it into your nails so it gets in all the little nooks and crannies. And I do two layers of primer. It really helps with adhesion if you're somebody who's struggling with adhesion. And then after you do your two layers of primer, you're going to want to do a layer of gel base. Now, you're not going to see me do a layer of gel base and cure that because for me, gel base does not last on my nails. Even when I got them done at a salon, gel base peeled off my nails. So I learned a while ago that it's just not a good product for me, no matter how many ones I've tried. Like I've tried so many gel brands and none of them seem to want to stay on my nails. But if I do primer and then builder gel directly on my nails, they will stay. So that's what I do here. But I like to tell everybody that you should probably start with doing gel base on your nails and if for some reason it doesn't if your builder gel starts to peel off then you can try without gel base underneath and then I start doing my extension first I do the slip layer over my entire nail and the slip layer is the uncured layer of gel that you do it will help your builder gel flow down your nails once you're doing like your full bead so you take your full bead you put it on the back of your nail after you did your slip layer and then pull it down and you pull it down onto the extension since I was just doing small extensions I did my slip layer quick and then pull the bead down so that it would go down onto where the nail would be extended. And I've had these on now for about two weeks and they still look great. They're staying on really well. You definitely want to be careful when you're doing extensions that you don't get the gel underneath your natural nail. It's really hard at first to not get any gel underneath your natural nail like where the form is fitting. So having the form fit correctly is really, really key in keeping that builder gel in the correct place. You definitely don't want any seeping under your nails because then it might not fully cure and then you'll have like a bunch stuck under there and it might get stuck to your skin. Now if that does, if you get a little bit underneath your nail what you can do after you fully cure it after you do all your layers you can take your e-file bit and go underneath I mine just felt a little bit thick in some areas so since my nails were so short I was able to take an e-file and you'll see me do this later in the video I took an e-file and went underneath my nails to kind of clean up a little bit under there and make it like nice and smooth if anything just didn't feel as smooth from when I did the extension and it's been a while since I've done extensions so I feel like I was a little out of practice for sure. My hands kind of forgot like how to pull apart the forms and I I didn't show this in the video but a couple forms I ended up having to throw out because my fingers just got stuck to them and um, if you've watched any of my videos you know I'm really rough about things so like I yanked it off my hand and like ripped the form apart but I thought, I don't know if anybody's going to want to see me like rip form, so I didn't put that in here, but just know like it's okay if you do, just grab a new one. I did each nail extension the same way. I'd put my, I'd put my really thin slip layer down and then I'd take a bead of builder gel and I am using clear builder gel in a jar here. It's from OG Dip Powder and I'd put the bead back towards the back of my nail, but not quite at my cuticles. Then you kind of want to like bounce it back a little, push it back towards your cuticle and then pull it down, focusing on the center of your nail where the apex is going to be. So I do two, I'm going to do two layers on my nails. Since I'm doing a little bit of length, you want them to be nice and strong. And on that first layer, that's when you're going to start to build your apex. So when you, after you do that bead and you start pulling it down, you focus on the center and then just kind of 
fill in the sides of your nails with the builder gel. That's really going to help. After each nail, I make sure that I flash cure it 10 seconds before I take off the form. And then I fully cure all five nails for 60 seconds. Now, I did cure my thumb separately. I always cure my thumb separately. I always recommend to everybody to cure your thumb separately. It just helps to make sure that your thumb isn't in the lamp in some kind of like strange way that then you're not going to get it fully cured because I've done that before. I have, this was, it, it was a while ago. This is when I started then putting my thumb in separately. I accidentally, I thought I fully cured my thumb, but I must have had it sitting at a weird angle. And when I went to file, it, literally all the builder gel came off. So don't make that mistake. Whenever I'm do any extension no matter what shape I want to do I try to keep the shape a bit wider than I originally think that I want when I pulled the gel down to extend it I kept kind of a squared off shape because I wasn't sure how thin I wanted to go with my almonds that I ended up doing so I'd rather have to file a little extra than not have enough builder gel on and have my nails be too skinny and the shape look a little wonky that is why you see like a really funky crazy shape I just just try to get it to a little bit longer than the length that I want it so that then I can go and I can do hand filing. I actually really like hand filing my builder gel. I know some people use um, e-file but for me I just get the best shape when I use a hand file and I like to get my apex in really nicely with the hand file. When I try to use an e-file to you know shape the top of the builder gel it just doesn't work as well for me. I'm sure if I practice a lot more it would get better but I just like the hand file. Some things I feel like are just better done with a hand file than an e-file. So when you're working on your second layer of builder gel, you want to do that same bead in the middle and then drag it down the apex and gently fill in the sides. Every nail that you do, you want to be focusing on the apex and then just floating a little bit of the gel down to the sides because the gel is going to slowly self-level anyways and you don't want a ton on the sides of your nails, then you're gonna have a kind of strange shape. It's not gonna be strong because you're not gonna have that apex built, which is the highest point of your nail where it is likely to break. So if you push on your nail and you see a little white spot, that's where you know that your natural apex is, and that's where you know you should focus your builder gel apex, or whether you're using dip liquids, whatever you're using, that's where you should focus your apex. Builder gel is definitely one of those trust the process things, especially if you're doing extensions. Mine look crazy right now, but then once I get to filing and shaping you're going to be shocked about how the ending looks if you're still struggling with builder gel i just did this huge builder gel guide over 50 pages of everything that you need to know from start to finish that you can print out so i'll make sure i link that in my description and down in the very first pinned comment once you finish that second layer make sure you fully cure all your nails for at least 60 seconds or however long your builder gel needs to cure for then i like to spray it with ice purple alcohol you can also just straight wipe it and then on limp free wipe and I get to shaping and filing. So I go along the sides. I do the very rough almond shape that I'm going for before I start filing on the top. That's what I like to do first. It really works for me to get like the basic shape going. And then I can go in with my hand file 100 side of a 100, 180 grit file since it's a little bit grittier. Actually, no, I'm using the 180 side. I'm sorry, my brain is not working today. And I slowly start to file the apex into my builder gel, anything that I feel like was missed. So I make sure I kind of curve the file, like you're curving a file over a hill because you're pretending like you're the middle of your nail is a hill. So you want to curve that file over top of it. You don't just like file it real flat. And then I go in with a buffing block to make sure it's super smooth because I'm going to use peel base right on my builder gel. I'm not not putting top coat on. I've been experimenting with that. And then you can go in with an e-file underneath your nails. I like this cuticle bit that just helps me smooth out anything under my nails that got a little bit too rough when I was doing my extension. If you're sitting here thinking, I am so not ready for extensions, I'm just trying to learn builder gel, then make sure you check out this next video where I'll go over how to do a builder gel overlay on natural nails. Thanks so much for joining me today, Nail Crew.